Hey friends, we are live. It's day three in five days to becoming a postnatal fitness specialist. Today, day three, we're going to be talking about two essential tips for simpler postpartum nutrition coaching. Simpler postpartum nutrition coaching. That's what we are going to dive into today. Two tips that I think that coaches and trainers should be using with their moms if they are doing nutrition coaching postpartum. So my name is Jessie Mundell. I am a prenatal postnatal exercise specialist. I do nutrition coaching as well, but it does not look like what you might think or assume nutrition coaching looks like in the traditional sense. I used to do nutrition coaching that did look more so like traditional nutrition coaching. And what I mean by that is it looked like talking about food, quantities, calories, macros, meal plans, um, strategies, nutrient timing, meal timing, portion control, portion sizes, things like that a lot. I really don't talk about that stuff at all anymore. And you might be wondering how do you do nutrition coaching without talking about that stuff? And that's what we'll get into today. So if you are on live, let me know that you're here, seeing some names pop up now. You can just comment in the comments below. I'll be able to see your questions and comments if you want to chime in as we go along today. I'm just gonna pull this up on my computer as well so I make sure I can see you. Okay, so biggest key point that I want to get across today is that nutrition coaching, what, we, what are we even trying to do with nutrition coaching postpartum? How are we trying to help our moms with food, um, the actual consumption of food, and then the mindset around food as well. Hey Katie. So what we're trying to do with food and postpartum is to promote healing, recovery, energy, that is always a tricky one postpartum. And then we're trying to associate food with pleasure and also food is going to be for fuel. We're gonna talk about these things a little bit more in depth as we move through this session today. When we do talk about those two nutrition coaching tips that I think are important to implement with moms. But these are the, the underlying principles that we want to always consider with food, with moms. Healing, recovery, fuel, pleasure, energy. This is what we're trying to do. This is why we're even talking about food with moms within our scope, whatever that might be for you. For me, it is as a trainer or a fitness coach, you might have a different scope with food, but we always wanna keep it within our scope whatever type of fitness or health professional we are. Okay, tip number one. This is my first essential tip if you're doing postpartum nutrition coaching with moms. Avoid calorie or macro counting and meal plans. So this is gonna be, this is gonna be a big shift for a lot of people if they are doing this type of nutrition coaching with moms. Not saying you have to avoid this altogether, I simply just do not think that it is a necessary step to be taking with moms, especially in the early uh, time period postpartum. Um, so calorie and macro counting, what that would look like would be giving your clients a set number of macros, so protein, fat, carbohydrates, or a set number of calories, total number of calories that they wanna hit at each meal or throughout the day. This is very difficult to be able to actually accurately calculate what someone might need. And now being able to speak from experience, it's so hard to implement this. Not that I was trying to implement this postpartum, I just cannot even imagine trying to implement this postpartum, let alone one baby having toddler and say a newborn around or other kiddos around too, how you, how a mom, a new mom would ever feel successful doing this in her life is just beyond me. Another point that I wanna make with calorie macro counting and meal plans um, is that I do not think that it is necessary for true health. I think that we can sometimes fall into this um, story or this belief that we are giving these guidelines to our clients because it's gonna make them healthier. But I think we really need to unpack that a little bit and understand if this is promoting and benefiting their health or are we simply contributing to more mental and emotional stress in their life 
physical stress as well, okay? So these are things that I just think are so key to consider when we're talking about food and nutrition with moms. Calorie and macro counting, is it, is it necessary for true health in their life? Tamara says, it's impossible, says the mom of six. Cannot even imagine. Um, I mean, just being postpartum with one baby who is now a two-year-old, a lot of days still are just trying to get in meals and snacks when I can. Um, sometimes I eat past full because I'm not sure when the next meal will be. Sometimes I don't get enough to eat because we're distracted, we need to move, we gotta get somewhere, the toddler needs something. A lot of meals are just super quick. What I just had before I came downstairs to get on live was some cheese, some salami, and cookies. It's fine, it's gonna be okay. There's no way in my life that I would ever be able to implement a meal plan, so I'm just sure as hell not gonna be able to coach on that. Sound good? Hey, Jennifer. All right, so I just think that meal plans, calorie, macro counting, difficult to actually calculate the needs of what a mom might require. So just the specificity of what we need those numbers to look like, I think it's just very difficult. The demands of energy postpartum are so high and vary so much on a day-to-day -day basis. I just think it's difficult to actually plan that out well for someone and then I think it's super hard to implement and I don't know if it's going to contribute to health and also feelings of ease and success around food. Okay, cool, I'm seeing, I love this approach. Wonderful, Kira. Hello. Okay, awesome. All right, second tip that I want to give you. When we're talking about nutrition coaching, reiterate to your clients that food is for fuel and for pleasure. F food is for fuel and for pleasure. We are doing a disservice to our clients if we are leaving one of those categories out. If we fail to consider that food is for fuel and food is for pleasure for not having that conversation together, we're doing a disservice to our clients. So I really believe, and I experienced this personally in my own life, that moms need to feel good in their bodies to be able to thrive in their lives from a physical function perspective, but also how we're feeling mentally, emotionally, and physically how we're feeling in our bodies. And food, the consumption of food, um, how little, how much, the quality, the quantity is going to affect that. A big topic that I talk about with my clients is pleasure of food and allowing ourselves to be able to experience the pleasure of food. This is something that took me a long time to be able to learn and to do because I had a lot of disordered um, eating habits and behaviors and ideas around food for a long, long time that were tied to body image as well. So this is something that we talk about with my clients a lot is giving ourselves permission to simply enjoy food um, to be able to taste food and love it and think that it is so good but also that it's feeling so good in our bodies. So something that I often talk about as well, you might have seen me use it, is the hashtag it's just food. This was something I started telling myself a lot when I was trying to eat in a way that was a bit more intuitive um, and I just wanted to feel better in my body during meals and especially after meals. So it's just food was a way for me to start reducing the stress um, and the guilt that I placed on myself for eating. I was in a place where I was really thinking about food as good, bad, uh, dichotomies around specific foods and if they were okay or if I should feel guilty because I ate them. Again, I think it's so necessary to be talking to moms about these concepts, about these mindset around food. So bottom line, food is for fuel, yes, because we need to recover, we need to heal. The body has gone through so much, perhaps trauma in many cases, um, through birth, postpartum, whatever the case may be. So we need fuel to be or to, in order to help our bodies recover and heal well to be able to have energy, to be able to feed babies if mom is feeding baby with her body, to be able to care and parent. So much energy that goes into that. So absolutely, food is for fuel and food is for pleasure as well. 
we really need to start taking away the guilt and the shame that can occur around food for moms, especially in times where their body is going through a lot of shifts and their body might look very different than it has before. I'm just going to um, check in with your questions here. Okay, M says, so needed to hear this. I struggle to eat most days, four months postpartum. Sometimes it's 2 p.m. and I realize I haven't eaten yet. Yeah, totally have been there, Em, on many days, many occasions within the last two years. Um, <laughs> during pregnancy and pre-pregnancy, I didn't think this was really a thing that would ever happen to me. But absolutely, your day can for sure just get away from you depending on what's going on in your day and how baby is doing that way and what they require of you. Okay, Jillian says, I know not fully today's topic, but curious to find more information on nutrition for concurrent breastfeeding and exercising mama. So hard to know how to focus fueling goals around this for myself and others. Thanks, Jesse. Hey, Jillian. So yeah, so someone I would look at um, is Dr. Jessica. Of course, now I forget her name. Um, I'll post it below in the reply to your comment, Jillian. But Jessica, oh, Jessica Drummond. She has an incredible amount of information on nutrition, holistic approach to nutrition. There is also some research, I do believe, uh, that's looking at breastfeeding moms and exercise and calorie requirements. That being said, I think that it is perhaps more effective uh, for the long term to actually get our clients to be diving in to the sensations uh, that they're feeling and experiencing in their body, what their recovery is looking like, what their energy is looking like daily life and during workouts. Um, so again, I don't, and then of course you're talking to about, I assume, um, like actual nutrient requirements, vitamins, minerals, macros, which I think is super interesting as well. Um, so there's probably more specific information on that. I'll just say from my personal coaching perspective, again, I don't talk too much about that stuff because I think that we just need to get these basics, these bottom lines down first. How does food make me feel? What is my energy like? Am I able to eat throughout the day? Um, for my moms, that's kind of the basics of what we are trying to shoot for. And then again, noticing how we feel in our lives because of food. I hope that makes sense. But I'll post Jessica's work in the comment below um, and then I'll see if I can pull up a couple of different studies on that too. Anything else? Just wanna make sure, check out my notes, see that I got everything covered. So I think you can probably tell from everything I'm saying today is that the approach I take with nutrition coaching is to do the best job I can to help my clients have a lot of ease around food, give them a lot of permission to simply eat, um, and then keep tuning in with their body and understanding how food is making them feel physically, mentally, and emotionally. Just gonna check in with a couple more questions here. Um, okay. All right, Chelsea says, I'm finding it hard to get enough calories by eating healthy, in quotations, as I'm breastfeeding twins and only 11 weeks out unless I eat heavy carbs and food that's not as healthy. Any snacks packed with calories that are healthy? Okay, I love this so much, Chelsea. Um, first, congratulations, breastfeeding twins. You're a rock star. Um, okay, so one thing that I, we have had this conversation with my clients lately too, is what if we don't think about eating healthy? Like what's the worst that's gonna happen if we don't eat healthy? What if we just don't even put that restriction on ourselves? What if we don't even think about that mindset around food? What if you don't think about heavy carbs as unhealthy? Then what happens? What if you eat more carbs? That would really just simply be my advice to you. Eat more of the foods that you're truly wanting to eat and see how you do. I think that we must, in most cases, be eating more carbohydrates postpartum, especially for breastfeeding moms, breastfeeding twins. Your carb requirements are likely going to be high, probably higher than you've ever been used to before just to keep yourself going and to fuel those babies too. Um, so I would just recommend you eat 
you eat and you just see how it makes you feel and then you test and tweak from there. Of course, we can find snacks that are packed um, with more fat, with more protein, but I would say for now, focus on eating foods that taste really good and do not be afraid to eat carbohydrates whatsoever. Um, let's see, I'm just going to leave this one question until later that's on pelvic floor dysfunction, just in case there are any more questions on the nutrition stuff for today while we're here. That might be it. Okay, so my two tips, just to reiterate, avoid calorie and macro counting in meal plans. If you can, I do not think they're necessary. I do think they're very difficult to implement and I'm not sure they're gonna be useful strategy for most moms. And then reiterate to your clients over and over and over again that food is for fuel and it is for pleasure and it is okay for food to be pleasurable um, and it's important for food to be pleasurable and also that food absolutely is for fuel and that is one, one, one side of it, okay? Um, Kira says, I love this approach and I would like to also encourage people to think about how they feel emotionally as well as physically energy wise. Absolutely. That's what it all comes down to. It really all comes down to that. We have to think about nutrition to be used as a holistic health approach. And I think it is absolutely key to be doing this in postpartum nutrition coaching. All right. Tomorrow. We are going to switch gears, going to be talking about how to keep your integrity when marketing to moms, especially in this fitness, nutrition, wellness space. We've probably all seen a lot of ads, maybe on Facebook, a lot of flyers, a lot of marketing from businesses that work with moms who um, you might not agree with their approach, we'll say that. A lot of, um, a lot of companies that I would never market how they market to moms just because it does not feel in my integrity. So we'll talk about that tomorrow. Sound good? All right, if you have any more questions, pop them in the comment box below and I will jump on and uh, answer them all up as best I can. And I'll see you back here tomorrow for day four at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right, everybody have a great afternoon and evening.